There's a lot of work to be done in the midst of this crisis happening across our nation and the world. And regardless of your personal circumstance, whether you're working from home or right now work has pushed pause and you're in a moment of kind of limbo, waiting to see what is next. Here's the reality for those of us who follow Jesus. Right now, you and me, we can join in on the work of what God would want us to do and how God would want us to embrace this moment, to be a support to those across our country, to those across the world, to leaders in key positions, as well as for those in the church and in medical areas and first responders. And here's why. Because in 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 1, God through the Apostle Paul says this, First of all then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of our God and Savior, who desires that all people be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Here's what we see in this passage. God, through his apostle, is reminding us that no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the season of life, he wants us to get to work by hitting our knees in prayer. See, we oftentimes don't think about prayer as work. We've grown so accustomed to the mundane and the routine, and maybe even in some of our own churches, just the the mundane and the routine of, of being a Christian in our country. And we oftentimes take prayer for granted. It's something that we might say at our dinner table as a blessing before a meal. It's something that uh, even even me as a pastor, I might pray and I might say, okay, Lord, you know, we came up with this great plan. Would you just bless this plan? And the Lord wants to remind us in this moment that prayer is so much more. It's work. It's how we grow in dependency upon him. And what we know from his word, while it's a divine mystery, prayer does change things. Somehow in God's infinite wisdom, his divine sovereignty meets our responsibility and he waits for us. He wants to hear from us. He wants to hear the cries of our hearts as we offer up that pleasing aroma of incense of prayer up to him. And so what we see in this passage here in 1 Timothy chapter 2 is some very specific ways to pray. So no matter where you're at, if you're a Jesus follower, in John chapter 4, Jesus reminds us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you've received Jesus by grace through faith, you have his Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And Jesus himself said he's the way, the truth, and the life. And he's given us his word containing his truth. And so we can pray with confidence as we stand on his word led by his spirit. So today's prayer exercise is this. I'm going to give you five categories, five broad categories of people to pray for that flow out of this particular passage. What I want to encourage you to do is write these five categories down and then pray over each of them, not just today, but in the days to come. We see in verse 2, Paul is saying that he's encouraging people to pray for kings and those who are in high position. So here's our first category. Let's be praying for our governing officials, our local officials, our state officials, and then our national officials. Pray particularly for wisdom right now. Pray that the Lord would give them clarity to know how to help stabilize the economy. Pray that he would give them wisdom to know how to effectively communicate the message to the population and then for for the local officials to their own communities. The second category to pray for are medical professionals and first responders. These men and women are literally some of them laying down their lives to help the population in the nation and in their localities get through this current crisis. So let's be praying for them. Let's pray for protection. Let's pray for wisdom. Let's pray for safety. And let's pray that the Lord would give the leading minds in the medical field the ability to come up with a solution to this crisis, whether it's for immunizations, whether it's for distributing medical supplies that need to get out. Pray specifically for those who are fighting this on the front lines. And then our third category of people to pray for our pastors and church leaders. As a pastor, I can speak into this just from my own limited perspective. Things are really hectic right now. There's a lot of work to be done and we are praying and working hard behind the scenes to ensure that our local congregations are cared for, that our people are encouraged, that 
we as under shepherds to the great shepherd Jesus are caring for those who the Lord has entrusted to our care during this time. So please be praying for pastors and church leaders across the nation and then pray for them specifically in your own congregation. Pray for wisdom, pray for strength, pray that the Lord would speak to us so clearly. What is he trying to say, not just to us as pastors and church leaders, but what is he trying to say to his church right now? And then the fourth category to pray for are Christians. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Jesus. Pray not only for those church leaders, but for all those who follow Christ. Let's pray specifically that we might embrace this moment, that we might be the practical hands and feet of Jesus in safe and spirit-led ways finding creative ways to embrace our communities, to love our neighbors, even if it's through a phone call or a video chat or dropping off some food at their front door. Pray for your brothers and sisters right now. And then the fifth and final category is this. Pray for those who don't yet know Jesus. Paul ends this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, reminding us that God wants all people to be saved. And I don't know about you, but part of my own story is reflecting on how the Holy Spirit of God uses just about anything to draw our attention, to show us our need for Jesus, and to lead us into repentance and trust in Jesus and find new life in Him. So this this crisis sweeping across the nation is a trial. So let's pray that not only your brothers and sisters and yourself as a Christ follower would embrace this moment, but pray for those who don't yet know Jesus that this moment God will be grabbing their attention that he would be showing his love to them through not only his church, but through his Holy Spirit, drawing people to Jesus, that all people might come to know him right now in the midst of this crisis. Because remember, God works all things for the good, for those who believe in him, that we might be conformed into his image, Romans 8, 28, and 29. So today, write these five categories down and begin praying specifically for each of the men and women that fall into these five categories so that we might put 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 into practice so that we might see God move in unprecedented ways in our nation and in our world.